are ahead of week 14 for another game preview, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's December. These games matter. We are officially right now the seventh uh, the seventh playoff team with the third wild card spot. We have a chance. I didn't believe this was possible. You know, a few months ago we were losing to the Atlanta Falcons, who hadn't won a game yet, and on our way to a one and five start before the bye week. It's an incredible turnaround. So. Before we begin, I do need to give uh, Mike Zimmer, Kirk Cousins, and everybody that I have criticized heavily this season some props, because to get to this point um, says a lot about what they were able to do after the bye week, and the fact that the defense has gotten better, you know, according to Football Outsiders, they rank ninth in DVOA, um, which is incredible. I mean, it's just the fact that we have suffered so much attrition and lost to the injury, and, you know, it, it's just been... I, I can't believe we're six and six. I honest to God, I can't believe it. I thought we were doomed to go five and 11, four and 12, something really horrible after that Falcons game, because it just looked like the wheels had fallen off. But here we are in December talking about the Tampa Bay game as a critical uh, point um, catalyst, if you will, for the rest of the season. There's only four games left after, um, after we beat the Jaguars. Tampa begins in Tampa Bay uh, where we haven't had a lot of success, but we'll get to that in a minute. And then we've got uh, the Bears and the Saints and the Lions to round out the season, so we'll see how things go. <clears throat> but the focus today is on Tampa Bay, not the rest of the season. Let's begin, of course, with the injury reports. I did a midweek injury report on Wednesday, so we'll uh, follow up on that with the final injury reports. Uh, the designations are as follows for the Minnesota Vikings. Eric Kendricks is officially out for this game, as is Alexander Madison. Uh, Kendricks is out because of the calf injury that he tweaked in the warmups uh, before the Jaguars game. And um, Alexander Madison is, of course, out because of post-op appendectomy. So he will be unavailable this week. Uh, Kyle Rudolph has been upgraded to doubtful. He was uh, a did-not-practice um, variant uh, for the longest time this uh, this week. Irv Smith Jr. is questionable for this game. I think he's probably going to play. Uh, for the Buccaneers, a little bit more simpler on their side of the ball. Uh, Jamel Dean is doubtful for this game. And that's it. Um, everybody else was a full participant uh, this previous practice that is relevant. Mike Evans, uh, according to Bruce Arians, had a small scare with the hamstring that caused him to miss one practice, but apparently that's okay. Uh, that'll be something to keep an eye on going forward, but he was listed as a full participant for today. So that concludes the uh, player's availability for this uh, por portion of the preview. Let's move on to team history. This is always interesting. Um, because it's not somebody that's in our division, you know, we're not really all that familiar with Tampa Bay, and uh, for good reason, because we've only played them 55 times in the history of, um, in the history of everything, if you will. So, Vikings lead the series 33-22 to overall against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, the last uh, meeting between these two teams was in 2017, Minnesota won 34-17. to uh, The last time Tampa Bay won a game against us was 2012, where, um, they won 36 to 17. That was also our last game that we played in Tampa Bay, so it's been a long time, eight years. Uh, or no, excuse me, the last <laughs> the last game that we played in Tampa Bay was 2014, so it's been six years. Uh, Minnesota won that 19 to 13 in overtime. Uh, the last 10 in Tampa Bay is um, is the is the brutal portion of this. Um, we're two and eight when it comes to winning football games in Tampa Bay. It's just something different about that Florida weather, and I think I even said so in the in the NFL pick em video for this week that um, when I pick the Dolphins over the Chiefs, there's just something different about playing in the Florida uh, atmosphere, humidity, whatever it is. The Patriots have struggled down there before. I anticipate that a lot of other teams are going to experience similar circumstances. Uh, also, another note, this is Tom Brady's first year as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, so I pulled up our history against him. And we've played the Patriots even more infrequently when it comes to team versus team, but... All five, team, all five times that we faced Tom Brady as a New England Patriot, we lost. <laughs> the first time was in 2002. Um, we won, or we lost by seven. And then after that, he just had his way with us. None of the games since then have been close. We've lost by 10 or more uh, to Tom Brady as a member of the New England Patriots. But, you know, this is a different team. It's a different division, uh, different head coach. We don't have to worry about Bill Belichick being a factor in this one. Tom Brady is on his own. Uh, so let's move into the tail of the tape here, starting with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, currently 7-5, and five, second place in the NFC South. Uh, points forced this season, 344, that's good enough for 6th in the league. They average 28.7 points per game. Uh, points allowed is 280 this season, that's good for 11th in the NFL. They average 23.3 points allowed per game. 
Uh, their last game, they lost to Kansas City, 27 to 24. In their last five, they are two and three, but they've played some pretty stiff competition. Their schedule is a lot tougher than ours was during this last stretch. Moving on to the Vikings side of the tape, uh, currently with a six and six record, second place in the NFC North. Our points forced this year are 319. That's good for 12th in the league, averaging 26.6 points scored per game. Uh, points allowed, 329. That's 26th in the NFL. We averaged 27.4 points allowed per game. Last game we won against the Jacksonville Jaguars, 27 to 24 in overtime. And last five, we are four and one with the only loss coming against the Dallas Cowboys. So it measures up as a kind of a, you know, a different spectrum, if you will. The Buccaneers are trending downward, having played a lot of stiff competition. The Vikings are trending upward, having played a lot of weak competition. And I think that's important to note because Tampa Bay will be the first team since Green Bay that we will have played with a winning record. And sandwiched in between those two games were Chicago, Detroit, um, Jacksonville, Carolina, and Dallas. In the three-game homestand, we went 2-1 and one against uh, teams with losing records. And we were able to beat Chicago in Chicago for the, um, you know, what felt like the first time in a while. The, you know, the first win on Monday night for Kirk Cousins. So there is an opportunity for us here to make some more noise in uh, breaking trends, if you will. But uh, it is important to note the distinction between the two teams. The, fa the fact that Tampa Bay has struggled a little bit in recent weeks is because they've played a lot of winning teams. Uh, moving on, let's talk about why I think... Um, well, not why I think, but uh, what I think are going to be the most important uh, keys to the game. So we'll have three of these, and I'll go over each one a little you know, in a little detail. So key number one uh, for the Minnesota Vikings is special teams. Uh, this unit must limit mistakes in wind field position. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings' average starting field position this year has been their own 25.6 yard line. That is good for 30th in the NFL. That is really close to dead last so we really need the special teams uh to a limit mistakes and b figure out a way to give us an opportunity to have better starting field position we need to win the battle of field position if we are going to um you know score points against this defense key number two to the game is ronald jones um i am somebody who earlier in the season didn't have enough respect for ronald jones and he has proven me wrong um I went into the uh, NFL draft previews looking at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I made a video with a seven-round mock, and I said, hey, maybe the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers should take a running back, and I forget which one I gave them and what round it was, but they ended up drafting Keyshawn Vaughn in reality, and it, that turned out to be nothing of really any sort of threat to Ronald Jones' status as the, the lead back in Tampa, and Leonard Fournette hasn't done all that much and that I know of this season. I don't watch a lot of Tampa Bay games, but I haven't heard his name in quite a while. But Ronald Jones is on pace for having a really good season. Um, the problem with that he poses against this uh, Vikings defense, who just bumped the camera, is that he is averaging 5.1 yard, uh, yards per attempt this season, while the Vikings' run defense is allowing 4.3 yards, uh, run, uh, uh, yards per attempt on the run. So the ground game is going to be pivotal uh, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and it's going to be an important test for this defense to see if they can shore up the interior uh, on the run defense. Key number three to the game for the Minnesota Vikings is Justin Jefferson. For the love of God, get him involved early and get him involved often. Last week against Jack Jacksonville, we had uh, Justin Jefferson had two targets in the first half. There is no excuse for not getting him involved more often and more early. Um, he is a candidate to win Rookie of the Year for a reason. He's a very highly skilled wide receiver. Um, not only does targeting him more often, um, you know, lead to success that he's obviously going to have, hopefully, <laughs> that's a loaded statement, um, it opens things up around the field, you know, stop locking onto Adam Thielen as a security blanket, and I know we want to run the ball, but we can't have Dalvin Cook touching the ball 38 times a game, it's just not good for anybody, um, so obviously, um, <clears throat> the key here is include Justin Jefferson a lot more than you have in the first half. To conclude this preview, I want to follow um, everything up with a Skullhio statement, the official statement of this game and what I'm looking for uh, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week. Uh, my statement is as follows. <clears throat> the Vikings will make a believer out of me with a win in Tampa Bay. Number of reasons why this is a thing, right? I, as I have said in this video so far up to this point, we have played a lot of really bad teams. This will be the first team that we play with a winning record since Green Bay. Green Bay, we won that game with a huge dose of Dalvin Cook and a big-time assist from Mother Nature with all of that uh, crazy win. So 
that feels like a one-off, right? Uh, the Bears were a bad team when we played them. They're still a bad team. They're going to be a bad team. Detroit Lions have fired their head coach and general manager. Bad team. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys have been really unsuccessful on defense this year and are down to starting quarterback number three. Um, well, they've used three starting quarterbacks. Andy Dalton is obviously the second, um, but we can't forget about Ben DiNucci this year. Um, same thing with the, uh, the Carolina Panthers. Uh, not a good team. Uh, probably overperforming out of the bad bunch, if you will, because they have such a young defense and a brand new head coach. Um, but uh, credit to Matt Rule for what he's been able to do in Carolina. Jacksonville, horrible team. One win team, obviously going to be going a, a huge rebuild next year. And then um, we get to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and this is the first real test. This is the first real time that I can look at a game and say, this is going to tell me who the Minnesota Vikings are. If we come out of this game seven and six, and we win the game, no matter how it is, if it's ugly, you know, an ugly win against Tampa Bay will have a different reaction out of me than an ugly win against Jacksonville. If you go and watch the video that I did post game versus Jacksonville, I was very, I was very not happy with that performance, despite the W. If we have the same kind of performance, but we beat Tampa Bay, uh, I'll trend in the other direction. Um, and plus, this is this also has huge playoff implications. If we can beat a team like Tampa Bay. I will admit that we probably do have a shot to make some noise in the playoffs and that we do belong. If we get roasted, toasted, and laughed out of Tampa Bay, um, it's not going to be good, but I'm not going to be as unhappy because I don't have the highest of hopes for this team uh, against a, a you know a team with a winning, winning record despite the struggles they've had in recent weeks. So if they get the W against Tampa Bay, I will be a believer. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll still keep expectations in check. Whenever you come to this channel, you're always going to get within context. You know, you know, we're not going to just make start making declarative statements uh, because they won a football game. You know, we still have to take everything in context and uh, look at the bigger picture as a whole. So that is the game preview for this Sunday against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.